Moderna Therapeutics announcing this morning a 10-year collaboration with fellow biotech Lanza. Uh, the two are teaming up in the race to find a large-scale vaccine against COVID-19. Join us now with more on the news. Stefan Bonsell, CEO of Moderna and our own Meg Terrell. Stefan, it's good uh, to see you again. We've had a lot of conversations in the past. It'd be great to scale this up. The way that you do it, your platform using messenger RNA to, to generate an immune response uh, has a lot of advantages in terms of being able to scale up quickly. Um, first, tell us uh, about the numbers you think that you could deliver in terms of doses. Uh, and then I want to get into and, and finally just understand the science exactly for how you're generating the immune response. But uh, you're talking about a billion doses in a much uh, more uh, quicker time than we've had in it historically with, uh, with vaccine development, uh, with Lanza. Yes, good morning, Joe, and thank you for having me back. Um, so we're very pleased to announce this partnership this morning. If you think about it, we're trying to do three things. We're trying to get a vaccine that has good efficacy and safety. We're trying to move this vaccine as fast as we can while focusing on safety through the clinic. And as you know, we were the first to start a clinical study in the US on March 16. And we announced on Monday of this week that we filed for a phase two study with the US FDA. And our team is ready to start dosing as soon as we get the green light. And the third thing is manufacturing, because if you only can make a few million vials, it's not going to be really helping the global public health issue that we have. And so uh, some time ago, my team and I, with our board, have been asking the question, how do we do 10x from what we can do alone? We have a plant in Massachusetts, which is operating and scaling up. We have said that this plant can do up to 100 million doses per year. Uh, and this is, of course, great, but it's not enough. And so we ask ourselves, how can we do 10x? And we talk to a few of the best contract manufacturers in the world, in the biotech space. Uh, and after a lot of analysis, uh, we concluded that Lonza was the best partner because they had not only the capabilities and the, the track record, it's a 100 plus year old company. They have sites around the world, in the US, in Switzerland, uh, in, New, uh, in Singapore, and many more countries. But also they had the space available now. If the space would have been available a year or two from now, it's not helpful. So we're able to move very quickly. We announced this morning that we are transferring the manufacturing process to the first plant in New Hampshire in the US, and that we're hoping with Lonza to start making product for uh, the corona vaccine as early as July. All right, Stefan, we want to uh, make sure that the vaccine has the desired effect and, and immunizes people. And there's a lot of questions, and there's, you are, there are a lot of competition with this. We heard from Oxford University. Uh, we're hearing from Pfizer as well. Uh, it, with your technology, it, it's kind of interesting, and I, I look uh, more closely at it. Um, it, it. With an RNA virus, you have a big advantage because you don't need a 1,000 times the dose to get into the nucleus to have it expressed. So it, it's 1,000. One, 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 my question is, so you, do you put in the entire genome of the coronavirus, and then some of it is expressed into protein, which is where you get the antigenic response? That's how it works. Why is it that putting in the whole genome can't create an actual virus uh, in the, why doesn't it actually cause you to actually have coronavirus? Why is it attenuated, which is what we normally need to do? Yes, so in our case, Joe, this is not attenuated. What we do is we give a messenger RNA that instructs only one protein in that case. Okay. The spike protein. We do not give the entire genome. But what we do, which I think is very powerful, is we give exactly the instruction of that protein of a virus, the full thing, but no more. And so what it does when you inject it into a muscular, you basically have human cells reading that messenger RNA, right. making the virus protein, and I think the immune response being very powerful. I, I understand. That's very good. Uh, and it's a, it's a protein that, that is essential. One of the, I don't know how, there's probably not that many made. It's a very small genome. So it's a protein that's essential to the coronavirus for it to work. So yes, it, 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 go ahead. Sorry. It's actually the protein that allows the virus to get into the cell. So by being able to have an antibody that your own immune system makes to bind to the virus, we anticipate that we'll be able to prevent disease. So you have a high, so Meg, this has worked in other RNA uh, viruses, I think. So there's a proof of, uh, 
uh, of efficacy, I think it's done, but been done before, right? May I mean, should, do you you go ahead with Stefan? But should we be highly hopeful that this is effective? This this uh, this vaccine, Meg. <laughs> Well, uh, it is a new technology and has never been brought to market before, but Moderna has showed in other viruses some promising early results. Um, Stefan, I want to ask you more about the manufacturing that you're doing with Lanza. Um, they are manufacturing in both the U.S. and Switzerland. How important is it um, where, the ma where the manufacturing is done to uh, which countries will receive the supply. You know, Scott Gottlieb wrote in the Wall Street Journal that America needs a vaccine first uh, to support its economic recovery. Whichever country gets the vaccine first will recover fastest. What kinds of pressure are you getting from different governments around the world to ensure you will be able to supply vaccine to them? Yes, good morning, Meg. As you can appreciate, every government is very worried for their citizens' health first and for the economy. And so we are working and in collaboration with many governments around the world. As you know, we, it's Dr. Tony Fauci's team who is running actually our phase one study in the US. And so we have the manufacturing site that Moderna owns and controls in Massachusetts already up and running. Uh, New Hampshire is going to be next in the US. But we think it's important to have many nodes of manufacturing around the world so that we can provide as many doses as we can locally in each different geography. That's what the governments are looking for. So you mentioned that Lanza will be doing the manufacturing in U.S. and Switzerland, but you also said they have a capacity or a site um, in Singapore. Uh, are you planning on potentially supplying this in Asia as well? So our goal is to make the vaccine available for, for the, around the world. And so we intend to do as many sites as makes sense. We want to be careful not to do too many locations because of the know-how and the time to take transfer. And it's, of course, a race against this virus. Uh, and so we will work very closely with the governments and with Lonza's management and our manufacturing experts to figure out the best mix of sites. So uh, tell us also about, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, Joe. go ahead. Go ahead, Meg. Thanks. Um, Stefan, I just want to ask you also about that phase two study that you filed for approval to begin uh, with the FDA saying you're ready to start dosing as soon as you get the green light. When are we going to see the results from the phase one? Of course, you're, you're trying to do these uh, on top of one another in an expedited timeline. Um, but what can you tell us about what you've seen from the phase one results so far and when we'll get to see the full results? So, indeed, we are starting the phase two based on the safety of the phase one. Uh, as we've uh, communicated two weeks ago when we got awarded the grant from BARDA, the phase one, as initially planned, is fully enrolled. Uh, three different dose level. 45 subjects in Seattle, fully enrolled. What we have announced uh, two weeks ago now is that we've added six new cohorts to the phase one. To add to the healthy adults, to add uh, elderly from 50 to 70 and then 70 and above. The same free dose level that we tried in the healthy adults, 18 to 55 years old. And so, as you can see from that, it seems that the safety uh, is, uh, first data uh, looks uh, positive. This is not a surprise to us. As you know, Meg, we have a platform. We use the same chemical component in all of the nine vaccines we have put in clinical studies up to completed phase two in the past. And so while we always want to be careful about safety, especially for vaccine that you give to healthy people, it has never been something we have worried about, but we are very careful and want to monitor it. Uh, on the efficacy side, like with any vaccine, we should be able, out of the phase one data, to get a very good indication of to the likelihood of a vaccine to work, because we're going to be able to take blood from the volunteers in that study, analyze in the NIH lab that blood, to see if we can make neutralizing antibodies, antibodies that will bind to a virus to prevent replication. And so that will be important, and that should come pretty soon. All right, Stephon, we thank you, Meg, and thank you, Stefan. We're, we're going to have Gilead on a talk. I, I, I would... I would ask you, you know the technology of Pfizer and Oxford and the others. If, do you think that there's an advantage in efficacy or in, in the ease of production for Moderna's version? And, and it's interesting to watch this race because it's a race to try and really save the world. So, and we, want, we wish all of you Godspeed, but do you think you're, you have an advantage in both efficacy and manufacturing, Stefan? Yeah, so like you, Joe, I want many vaccines to get to the finish line. No one company can help the okay. entire planet. So many of us need to get uh, 
to approval. I think messenger RNA is extremely interesting. It mimics a natural infection without giving you the full virus, as we discussed. Yes, right. And the scale-up is, is, is very impressive. So I think it's a very interesting technology.